It's a good place to be. Amen. The house of God is always a good place to be. I enjoyed Sunday school this morning. I enjoyed the singing. I enjoyed seeing people on the altar. You don't see that every place you go. I'm, I'm thankful this morning that we get to come to a place where you know you worship the Lord and you come to the altar and you can pray and things go things go wrong in all of our lives sometimes. We need to get in touch with God, and I'm glad that this is a place to do it. And uh, you talk to Him any place, any time. But it's good sometimes to come on the altar as a family. I seen the Matthew's little boy patting him on the back. Boy, I just blessed my heart. And I seen a little guy there come up, and he and I just love seeing children come up and pray. And uh, Braxton were coming up and pray. And, and uh, you know, I think it's a good thing showing the kids. You know, they need to get in touch with God too. You know, I, I just don't have a kid praying for me because they're pure. I I would love to have a kid praying for me. You know, if I got something going on in my life, that I would need a lot of adults. I'll be honest with you, and because uh, they're pure and they, they pray from the heart. And uh, I appreciate the kids in here at this church. I I just bless this name this morning. You know, I, I just thank him for every opportunity. I thank him that, you know, that we can come here and worship in spirit and in truth. I thank him this morning, you know, because I've been washing that blood that we've been Amen. singing about. I, I've had that blood applied to my life, you know. I don't know. I tell us every time I get up, can't help it. I, every, time I, every time I get up, I tell my testimony. I, I got saved in a revival down Long Island many, many years ago. I was about 12, 13 years old, whatever. And uh, we went to church that night, you know, didn't expect to get saved. I, I carried a little Bible with me most of the time. And I, I liked the music. That's all we had to do down there. I didn't have any money to do anything else. That's why so I went to church. And but that night, the Lord done something. He saved my soul. It just wasn't a regular service. Yeah. I got saved that night. I like to take the devil back to that time that I got saved. There's times in my life, Sister Melissa, that the devil points out things that I've done and, and points that well, you could shouldn't even be up there. But, you know, all that I love that word too. All that is covered yeah. by His precious blood yeah. today. You know, it's people bad. might remember, but He's not going to remember our sins. I'm thankful for that. I, I'm thankful for to be saved this morning. Uh, I'll just get on with the message here. I love each and every one. I appreciate the opportunity this morning to be here. And uh, if you got your Bibles, turn to 2 Kings chapter 22. If you're able to stand with me this morning, I appreciate it. If you're not able to stand, that's okay. 2 Kings chapter 22. And I'm going to uh, read verses 8 through 11 this morning. The Bible says in 2 Kings 22 and 8, it says, And Halakai, the high priest, Said unto the shape of the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hakiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. And Shaphan the scribe came unto the king, and bought the king word again, and said, Thy servants have gathered the money that was found in the house, and have delivered it into the hand of them that do the work, that have the oversight of the house of the Lord. And Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Halakai the priest delivered me this book, and Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book of the law that he rent his clothes. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to your prayer this morning. Lord, thankful, Lord, for the opportunity that we're to be here. Father, we ask the Lord this morning to forgive us of our sins. Lord, if I did anything between you and I this morning, that would break our communion. Father, Lord, we ask forgiveness of those. Father, I ask the Lord to open ears and hearts so we all can hear what thus saith the Lord. Bless your precious reading of your word, Father. Lord, bless the congregation. In Jesus' precious name, Lord, I pray. Amen. Amen. To get a little, I didn't want to read the whole chapter here, but I'm going to kind of preach a little bit out of a little bit of everything here. And we read about King uh, uh, Josiah. Well, he was eight years old when he took the throne. He was eight years old. And uh, you know, that's where I mentioned kids today. You know, God can use anyone, regardless of age. If you're eight or 80, God can use you this morning. And he got on the throne because they had killed his daddy. They had uh, went into his own house and killed his father, and he was in line for this. And uh, his father was a bad king. His father was a sinful king, and, and even the, the one before him was a sinful king. So, yeah, But he was eight years old. He was pure at heart. And, and, the, and, and the first uh, verse or second verse here said that uh, you know, he'd he done the, the word of the Lord. He, he followed what the Lord was going to have him to do. He he always there was searching for the Lord. He always was, you know, had a pure heart here in, in, in verses one and two here, and uh, it just kind of a general in, in, uh, introduction to him, and became the king at eight. And his father Amon, like I said, he was a bad king. He was one that was sinful king, and, and the guy before it, Manasseh, he was a bad king also. So the, the city was in ruins, I guess you could say, spiritually.
spiritually. The city was, was at, at a place where, you know, a lot of sin was at and a lot of wickedness, I guess you could say, was at. But, uh, but here he came and he said he done what was right in the sight of the Lord. You know, even amongst the sinners today, even in a world that, you know, that's turned away from God in a lot of places, we can do what's right in the sight of the Lord. And uh, that's exactly what we've got to do today. Is like, just like Josiah did, he, he done everything that, uh, that the Lord had having to do. And, and verses 3 through 7, kind of, uh, Josiah was uh, had the house of the Lord repaired, and, uh, and this was in the eighteenth year of his reign. So he went from the first year to the eighteenth year. I don't know why he waited so long to have the house repaired. I don't know. Maybe it took that long for the Lord to get to him. And you know, sometimes you know we got to be patient and wait upon the Lord. But uh, it was in his eighteenth year. But he did show respect to God's house. He wanted the house repaired. He wanted to, to get fixed. He wanted the house, you know, to be in good shape. And uh, then we come to a high college priest and said, "In the shape, and I, I have found the book." And that's what I want to preach on this morning is power in the book. You know, Brother Bird saying power in the blood. You know, the book was found here, here in the house of God. And it said it was found. It had been there a long time, I imagine. Maybe somebody hid it back. Maybe somebody didn't want the, the word of God to be spread. Maybe somebody, you know, maybe they just forgot about the word of God. You know, today we need to find our Bibles. We need to get into the word of God. There's a, there's a lot of homes today that's got Bibles sitting out in wide open places, but they never look in. We've got to see search the scriptures today. We, we got to look in the book and that's yes. where the power is found in, in the book. And, and said so it was in the house of the Lord all the time. You know, yes. the, the, it, the Bible was there but no one read it. No one got there. No, no one paid any attention to it. No one, you know, had, had even the even, it, inside of what the Bible would say but you know when you read, read the word of God when you search the scripture something happens to you each and every one of us we, we need to get along with God we need to uh, you know it's up to you to answer what, what people's questions like in Sunday school this morning uh, you know when people come and knock on your door you better know what what you're talking about and you better be able to search the, yes. the scriptures and know exactly you know if that person's a right or a wrong and we, we got to make that judgment call and you know I don't, I'm not going to welcome anybody in my house brother Vernon that's not uh, teaching or preaching the Word of God, and it's got to be in the Bible. It doesn't matter. I love commentary. Commentaries has got to line up with with the Bible here. But the, he said that, that, that the shape and the scribe then came to the king and brought the king to word again. And thy servants have gathered thy money that was found in the house, and another thing was found in the house, and delivered it to the hand of them that do the work to have oversight of the house of God. You know, we've all got an oversight of the house of God. We're all responsible for the house of God and what goes on inside of it. What 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 you know uh, what people comes in and how it's preached. And Brother Vernon has to stand accountable for every message that's preached from this pulpit here. He's the under-shepherd here at this church. Everything that comes out of my mouth he's got to answer for it too. i got to answer for it too, but he's got to answer for it too. So we've got to take that privilege you know, very very uh, strongly uh, and, and we've got to study the word and, and my wife did my witness, witness this morning is, is, you know, I spent a lot of time in this here. I spent a lot of time in, in this chapter here. Never preached on this before and uh, but uh, I, look, I looked at it for the last few days, last few couple weeks I guess you could say and, and the Lord said this is where you need to go brother and uh, so I had that and, 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 and that's what you have to do and then shape the scribe showed the king saying Halakai the priest had delivered me a book and shaped and read it before the king. You know, that's what we've got to do with the word of God. We've got to pass the word on. You know, we, uh, it's too important right. to hold back. It, it's like if someone had a cure for cancer or somebody had a cure for diabetes and, and kept it to themselves. You know, that's exactly what's happening today. We need to share the gospel. And, and that's what was happening here. There's a great change that's going to take place. Like I said, this was a wicked time. There had been two really bad kings that had set up, two, two kings that just uh, led sinful lives. And, and, and it led the people in the wrong direction and a lot of times that, that happens even in churches today that, that happens people's being misled people's getting misled by, by baptism we talked about baptism this morning now, baptism don't save you it's a good thing to do and after you get saved but, you know, baptism don't save you and, and it's only the blood of Jesus Christ and, and that, that, that's what we got to preach today but you know, how the of a priest that read the book and uh, Shaker read the book to the king and said that came to pass the king had heard these words of the book that he rent his clothes. You know, the book of the law, that's what they're talking about here, the first five books of the Bible. And he read that, you know, the law is still important today. The law, you know, if we had the Ten Commandments up at, uh, at uh, different lo localities, you know, they make them all take down. I believe the law is still a very, very important thing today. The, the, Jesus Christ fulfilled the law. Don't get me wrong there. The law has been fulfilled. He was the only one to do it. But if we look at the law, you know, the law shows us in a mirror exactly how sinful we are. And this is what happened to this king. Here. He found out. He looked in the Word of God and he said,
saying that, you know, he was a, uh, uh, the, the kind of his country, and the, I'm not going to read all that, but his country was, was in a sinful uh, position, and, and all the wrath of God was fixed to come down on them. The wrath of God is going to come down on the people one of these days. Uh, I know sometimes I, I hear people say, you know, God's been, been mean or, or what that, but they're not saying the wrath of God yet until the church is, is called out. Then the wrath of God is really going to happen during the tribulation. And, but the, 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 he said, you know, he looked at, and he was concerned about his people. He was concerned about, about all the congregation. He was concerned about all the people there in Jerusalem and, and Judea. And so he went out and he sent five people and uh, and I'm not going to try to mention all those names there, but he sent five there to, to the, the talk to inquire of the Lord for me and the people in Judah concerning the words of this book. For great is the wrath of the Lord that kindled against me because our fathers have hearkened unto the words, uh, not hearkened to the words of the book to do according to all. There's that word again. When I love it when uh, someone sings a song or someone says, says something and, and all I got that word underlined all that is written according concerning us and it's all the Bible Amen. and we got to take it all as a whole we, we can't pick pieces and parts and it's the whole Bible Amen. but he sent five out and as we all know five is the number of grace and he, he sent these five people out to talk to this God. lady here and, and, she, and, she, uh, and she went on in the verses 15 through 18 19 there she you know she talked about the wrath of God that was going to come up on them and but you know he had a in verse number 19 it says, Because thine heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord, and thou hast heard us what I spake unto this place, and against the happiness thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse. They had rent thy clothes and wept before, the, uh, wept before me. I saw I have heard thee, saith the Lord. And there, but behold, therefore, it's because he did this stuff. You know, if we do what the Lord tells us to do, and therefore you need to look and see what that word is there for, what's happened in the previous chapter or, or a few verses there. Therefore, you know, because he rent his clothes, because he seen the sin that was happening in the land, because he, he had a tender heart, because he had the love of God. you got to have that love of God. If you don't have the love of God first, you can't love anybody else. He was concerned about the uh, his whole congregation. Or he was concerned about everything that was going to go on. He was concerned about the wrath of God come up upon him. So he had a tender heart and he said, therefore I will gather thee unto thy fathers that shall be gathered and into thy grave in peace. And you know, the Lord God on one thought give us that pure peace, that perfect peace. And and I, I heard the lady this morning talk about her eyes and, and how that peaceful thing, you know, when she went through her, her anxiety. I, I, can, I know what you're talking about sister, about anxiety. I understand that very well, and uh, but the Lord's only ones can give us that peace. But this king here, he seen everything that was going on. He he realized that you know he, he needed to change here, and the word is what changed him. Well, I can't change you, brother Vernon can't change you, but we can tell you, That's tell right. the preacher word, and we can read the Bible to you. If I got up here and just read this, uh, this whole chapter and sat down, if that's what the Lord told me to do, that's what I'd have to do, and that would be effective because whatever He has us do is effective. But you know, I, I think this king here had a tender hard and, and he's seen it the wrong and sometimes we got to look at that mirror you know I, I know it's easy sometimes and, and, and uh, you know to point out well that person's doing this or that person's doing that or that person that needs to be doing that that's an easy thing to do but it gets a little bit more difficult when we got to look in that mirror when that when we got to look in that word of God and, and say you know what it's, it's me Lord it, it's not the other people you know I've heard a lot of people even come to different churches and, 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 and say well I, I just didn't get nothing out of that well maybe it's not the church maybe it's you maybe Maybe we need to get back in fellowship with God. Maybe we need to look in that mirror. Maybe we need to look at the Word of God and, and get back to where you know, our, our beginnings was. You know, I, I, when, I, when I first got saved, and, and I was just so full of joy and, and a happiness, and, and there was times in my life that I strayed away from the Lord. But you know, all that time, I knew that I was wrong. I, I, the Holy Spirit would always deal with me, and, and He will with you too. But you know, there's times that you can get away from God. But you know, we got to pray for those. And it, it's not that you know we don't want them back in. You know, we need to try to recover those people that you know maybe strayed away from church a little bit because anybody can do it and you might think well I'll never stray away from God I'll never stand Amen. against God I'll never I'll never leave a church I'll never stop serving him well it's easy to do you can do it you, but you've got to keep in the book and, and the word of God it is for each and every one of us you know Amen. if you only hear the word on Sunday morning Sunday night and Wednesday night you're not getting enough you need it yeah. you need it seven days a week you need that word of God you know, it'll penetrate your heart it'll make you want to serve yes. him it'll make you want 
want to get up in the morning time and go to the church. Yeah. It'll make you want to, uh, to serve Him. It, it'll make you, you know, last Sunday we was over at Cox Chapel. My wife got up feeling bad, but she went on to church. And by the time we got there, she was just really bad. And uh, and uh, I think her and everybody else slept through the sermon. I mean, only people was awake was the kids. And the, the, <laughs> <laughs> that was all right. And the, but the, I get, you know, that she was sick, so I give her a pass on that. But, the, but the, I still drink. So, and, uh, but that's all right. But, you know, she didn't sleep the whole time. But she was sick. I, you know, but anyway, but I, I'm thankful that, you know, that last week, that, you know, she, she still to go to this church. She wanted to go. She has that desire.